Hello, all that YouTube lands. Uh, pretty busy day for me so far. I've done two, <laughs> two comic book reviews already today. Two written reviews, and um, whenever I do a written review from now on, I'm going to do a um, spoken word version as well. I've done a review on this one here, uh, Forever Evil Arkham War number two, by Peter J. Tomasi, um, which is going to be up on um, Geek Out Nation pretty soon now. And I'll, I'll put out my, my verbal version as well here on YouTube. So this is Forever Evil Arkham War number two, T uh, Peter Tomasi and Scott Eaton's the artist. I'll give you some samples of the art before I go into my review. The art looks pretty decent. It's all very dark. As you might expect really in, um, in Arkham at the moment. Uh, they've got the, uh, the sun covered up, haven't you? So there's no light getting down. There's a world of darkness with the villains running around the streets. The civilians... Oh, can you see that? It's a bit blurred, isn't it? The civilians unable to, to defend themselves. So, um, as I was saying in this review, I'm wondering um, if you've got a gun for the zone in Arkham City, maybe. Because it appears that the uh, the public are just helpless victims. They need the police to save them. Why can't they save themselves? That's my question. Um, that um, possibility is not even posed in this book. It's like beyond the imagination of Peter Tomasi that a civilian population can actually defend itself. Or look, you know, look out for itself. Uh, he doesn't quite understand that concept. He's, um, you know, complete state worship of this um, Peter Tomasi. Anyway, let's um, read the review. There we go. Right. Uh, <coughs> I've got some bullet points. Um, um, the pluses, uh, pluses at the beginning. Um, it's enjoyably chaotic. It's a pretty decent artwork. Um, action packed and highly eventful, and it's great fun for uh, fans of DC villains. Uh, the minus is, uh, let's be honest. This book is just waiting for the return of Batman. Uh, civilians are portrayed as helpless victims relying on protection from the corporate state. And state institutions are seen as inherently good. Hmm. Right, so, the review. Forever Evil Arkham War, number two. Uh, so you might be questioning the purpose in reading the book that's about villains fighting amongst themselves for control of Gotham City. After all, we all know what's going to happen in the end, don't we? That being the return of Batman, lots of banging heads together, and his sort of villains being carted back off to Arkham Asylum and Blackgate Penitentiary. Well, of course, that's what's going to happen at the end. It's what always happens at the end, but let's forget that for a while. Let's just sit back and enjoy the chaos whilst old Bathead takes a well-deserved break in some wacky prison dimension for a while. So what exactly do we have here? Uh, we have Bane, all juiced up and vying to play their different sides against each other. He wants some law and order in this city of crazies, and the people die whilst he's restoring his own dictatorial form of order, well then that's just a Darwinian inevitability, isn't it? Then we have a um, penguin. Uh, penguin, a fat, waddling, self-interested, um, self bureaucrat, if I ever saw one. The penguin is only interested in himself. He will join any side if he himself benefits from joining. Of course, he will then betray that side and given the best career opportunity. Such is life, and I feel that penguin would do very well for himself in the world of legitimate, if you can call it that, Mainstream contemporary politics. And we have the crazy side of town as represented by my personal favourite villain, the Scarecrow. This fear inducing straw man is a control freak who wants to control the population through fear. Keep them separated, keep them afraid, then play them off against each other while sitting back and reaping the rewards from all their combined misfortunes. Scarecrow really is a man of our times. If he wasn't a Batman villain, then I can see Mr. Scarecrow doing a perfectly credible job appearing on mainstream news networks calling for the next illegal invasion, war or humanitarian intervention that involves bombing a foreign country into tiny little democratic pieces. And lastly, we have the old order as represented by Commissioner Gordon and a few of his corporate pals, living in the back of a van, helping out the civilians and looking to bring some order back into the darkened streets of Gotham. That's quite a difficult one for me to swallow, really, what with recent revelations of just what the authorities really think of us all in the real world. But I guess I have to let that slide for the time being. We'll keep it simple. Gordon is a good man, and a good man working for a corrupt institution is about as revolutionary as we're going to get in mainstream comics these days. Uh, so what's the artwork like in this book, then? It's okay. Um, it's dark, with shadows everywhere that are in um, keeping with what's going on in Gotham right now. The action scenes are well drawn and all the characters are distinct and individualistically portrayed. Plus I'm happy because my favourite villain, Scarecrow, looks menacingly unhinged and on the verge of a nervous breakdown. 
and that's exactly how Scarecrow should always look, in my opinion. So the narrative is a bit thin. Uh, we know what's going to happen, and the old order portrayed as the only ones able to help the civilians, rather than an arms prepared and self-sufficient population actually defending and helping themselves. So this is Gotham City during Forever Evil. I guess it's a gun-free zone because the population has been fixed at will, and there doesn't appear to be anything that they can do to protect themselves. Uh, quite a lot to be said there, really, don't you think? Uh, but I'll leave it for the time being and wrap up this review. The Ark and War number two is a well-drawn book about society in collapse. A citizenry unable to defend itself, and how villains always fight amongst themselves for control, even when working together will be mutually beneficial to the old lot of them. There's lots of action, lots of intrigue, Scarecrow is the star, and it's nice to see what would happen in Gotham if Batman's walking an extended va um, vacation. I have major issues with the population of Gotham being portrayed as a victimised mass, dependent upon the protection of the corporate state, but for the time being, I'm enjoying this book quite a bit, a bit more than I thought that I would. Uh, that's it, that's my review, and I'll give it a... Uh, we think about a 7.7, 7. 7, just below an 8, I think. Uh, because it's got problems, but um, if you take off your thinking hat for a second, then it's it's kind of okay. It's just, it's, it's just a silly comic with um, feelings running around, having a bit of fun whilst Batman is away. Yeah, whilst Batman is away, the feelings will play. So there's um, Forever Evil, Arkham War, number two, uh, by State Lover, Tomazzi. Uh 7.7 7 out of 10 for me. Hey, thanks for checking out my review. Um, thumbs up or thumbs down. And if you comment, I'll um, obviously reply. And then please check out um, check, check out Geek Out Nation. I will leave a link down below. That's it for me for the time being. Thanks again for checking out my review. Goodbye.